views and opinions expressed on Geeks Under the Influence are that of the panelists and not of our sponsors, Amazon.com and TeePublic. Parental discretion is advised. I don't know. I think the Eternals was really the turn where they started getting like well-known actors involved with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and that's where I think things started to get weird. You mean where they they were like the story sucks, so we better get some like star power to distract yeah. people from it. <laughs> Let's yeah, get exactly. Yeah. Incredibly exactly. popular. Look, it's Angelina Jolie. Don't worry that she no, her character bro. sucks ass. Yeah, the male Najiani, bro. I would call him. <laughs> Like top tier, right? But he's—I like, know who he is, but I don't think Selma Hayek. Selma Hayek is mm. top tier. Yeah. Mean, yeah, yeah. Well, she's top. Mm. Yeah. You can tell that they've gotten older, but they're still like fucking stunning. For you know, but you have to be careful if you go online to ask like, why did all these actors look young? Because then you'll go into some kind of crazy conspiracy thing, like the you know the blood of they the drink innocent. baby yeah. blood. Yeah, and, like yeah. like so you Fuck. have to be careful with that question. Like, are we are, they, are people still talking about the baby blood? Adrena Yeah, yeah, Adrena they will Krone. always yeah. be. Christ. Yeah, I think Selma Hayek's just naturally beautiful, and she didn't go for the bullshit uh, plastic surgery stuff. No. But, but <laughs> yeah. you know who you know who hasn't done anything to help himself out at all as far as looks go and aging? Fucking Bruce Willis. Oh, that's true. He, he figured out the key was just shave the head. Just that, shave. that was that, that was all he did. Was hey shave guys, his head. I figured it out. Shave the head. There you go. Well, you look that's at all he you, did. You look at actors that have had a shaved head for like the majority of their time, like the Tooch. Oh, fucking the Tooch, tooch yeah. is oh, aging like a fine fucking wine. That is um, true. That check he, out the Tucci Gang shirt at the, our new T Public store. Vin Diesel. Uh, Vin Diesel. Oh uh, no, but you got like <laughs> fuck, a, fuck, I, fuck, Terry Savalas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you have got uh, fucking Ving Rhames. Shave head dudes definitely just they age better. I think, and I think it's that the stress level that you get to when you start losing your hair and you start like dying it or doing the comb over that stress level just makes you age poorly it's like so you're saying just embrace it embrace it embrace it, it. Yep. stop fighting it the, do so the, do did someone diesel. tell Walton Goggins that I mean, no, to... Walton Goggins has the die hard era Bruce Willis hair where it's like hardcore like but have you followed all his corners? career where it's it's slowly gotten to that? It was like here, which I'm 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 pointing about six inches above my fucking eyes, and now it's like twelve inches. <laughs> but, <laughs> but for him, because he's got that crazy look, so he can have like like the little piece of hair that go everywhere, and it looks. He's crazy. following the footsteps of gods. We've got Michael Keaton. We've got uh, fucking Michael Keaton still does not shave his head though. No, true. He true. still does not shave his head. No, I, I will say though that uh, Walton Goggins. Those chompers, though, take. Oh yeah, the they, they center draw your stage. Eyes straight center down. stage. That is true. <laughs> center stage. <laughs> uh, but okay. Bruce Willis is what we were talking about on this episode. Not just his beautifully shaved dome, but also his entire career. There's been recent news oh, about God. like so many gems. Him being kind of taken advantage of in the the last bits of filming that he did, and also just knocking out oh, a yeah. shit ton of like great. Z movies. But you're right. Like I feel like part of the knocking out the shit ton was also part of the taking advantage yeah, of too. Absolutely. I mean, honestly, like I do. And that's not the that. entirety of our conversation. It, this is we will be talking about that, but we're also gonna be talking about celebrating Bruce Willis. Oh, man. Um, yes. oh, the, man. the weird like Kevin Smith goes. shit is gonna come up. The uh the like cop out and all that, of course, is gonna come up, but we're also gonna be talking about weirder stuff like Hudson Hawk. Uh, on and, fire vanities and breakfast of champions. Uh, we're holy be, shit! Yeah. I forgot about that yep. one. Yep. Oh wait, you know, there's a couple I got yet mentioned, so the I'm kid? excited for that. <laughs> the kid. Oh. Does anybody remember the old, the old, the old uh, gem that came out in the 2000s? Hostage. That was a good. Oh one. man. You mean the, what they did to the audience? Yeah. Yeah. See, I enjoyed that film, so we will have a conversation right. about that, sir. That's what's exciting about this episode is because there are like pure classics that I watch almost yearly. Uh, that Bruce Willis is in, and then there's stuff that is just like hilarious garbage. That I know we haven't gotten to the entry, but what else besides Die Hard do you watch yearly? What else does there need to be? <laughs> no, oh, you, you said cult classic. You want me to fill this you, in? You plural. So I'm just curious. Uh, what else? The Fifth Element. Check. Fair, fair, fair. Fun you don't. So fair. you don't watch Pulp Fiction anymore? Pulp Fiction. I, do, I don't watch it yearly. Uh, no, I'm watching surrogates. The... No, that's not one. No. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's definitely not. not I watch Unbreakable. 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 Is solid. But Glass can go fuck itself. Yep. 
fuck that fucking movie. So that's what's going to be fun about this conversation is that ultimately we are celebrating the the his career, career man. He has a, such a of a iconic actor. But let's let's yeah, do the intros though, before we jump yeah, into yeah, this yeah, quickly. Right. So yeah, we're, we're just ready. We're ready. Oh, I know it's we're Whoa, fucking we're with us. We're ready. Come on, yippee ki yay, motherfucker! Let's get this episode going. Geeks on the influence, Bruce Willis. Let's go. I feel like if Hans got that response instead of the Bruce Willis response, he might have just like, all right, I don't have a threat. And, he, and the movie would have ended because he's like, I don't have to worry about this guy. Anymore. If he was like, yippee ki yay, Yeah, he would have been like, no, I'm done. No, no that's fine. Was that too, gonna... <laughs> too exuberant? No, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's just real quick go through the panel here because we've got a lot to talk about because it's a very long and storied career. It um, is, yes. We've got, I mean, talk about beautiful disasters. Uh, this this topic right here with Bruce Willis oh, has boy. a plethora of beautiful disasters in here and we've oh got oh my god yeah his last 30 movies yeah no shit <laughs> and the, the tag team of beautiful disasters is here Groots and fuck you Hunter are fuck here yeah. to join us on this uh, cavalcade of Bruce Willis shaved head debauchery oh I'm, I'm hyped up for this shit fuck, we are yeah. gonna have fun today but before we jump into that fun we have a very very special announcement Four beautiful disasters. It's a GUI announcement on the network. <laughs> we have decided to grow the beautiful disasters family, and we have brought on a third co-host. Yes, I was worried that one of you was pregnant. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, he's the one that likes to have kids. This motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, right yeah. Here. true. That is true. But no, uh, we are bringing uh, one of our greatest r uh, repeat guests. It just made sense, one hundred percent. Murphy, Murphy Lawless, it yes, is coming Murph. in. It has been an inspiration the for several episodes for specific movies we had them on, and I mean it makes sense. Like they've been like lots of pastor. Fucking, you're on, you're on, you're on. Tammy yeah. and the T Rex. Tammy yeah. the T Rex. Yeah. <laughs> and really anything dinosaur related. And, yeah. Yeah. But also, that's fucking, never going to get old either. Yeah. I mean, what's the shitty horror uh, rock and roll one that we did? Black Roses? With? Oh, no. No, no, no. Trick or Treat. Trick or Treat. Yeah. Oh, Trick or Treat. Yeah. yeah. No, Black Roses is amazing. And so is Trick or Treat. That's true. Yes, yeah. it is. Okay. So Murphy is a uh, long running member of the GY family as far as a guest that's been on pretty much all the shows yeah um the first show actually to follow that dinosaur fucking like thematics was the jurassic park episode on gui oh yeah but uh, of course murphy's a, a perfect choice uh to join the showrunners and then and the, the hosts of uh the shows on this network uh we welcome them wholeheartedly and lovingly into our bosoms one of us one of one us, of us. Yes, so uh, Murphy, <laughs> welcome, and yeah, I couldn't think of a better person to join you guys on your oh schlock God. journeys through. Uh, I'm so goddamn excited, cinema. and uh, stay tuned, folks. It's going to be a fun ride. Oh hell yeah! Ah, now there's another person to be tortured by schlock abuse. Yes, yes, yes I know. Wait, so you're going to have a rotating schlock abuse with Murph yeah. too. Uh, oh, she doesn't got, they don't get out of that shit, right? Oh no. boy. Yeah, yeah. Oh man. Next up is my. Uh, partner in crime running this network and my co-host here in Geeks Under the Influence. We've got the the sexual icon of Geeks Under the Influence. Haven't brought that up in a while, so why not? Um, sure. if Lie he, to the listeners. If he shaved his head, hey, no, no you'd be okay. You'd look all right, shaved head. Yeah, do it. I think you'd be all right. But I have a very full when I you, you have like the, it's curly. not quite a pinhead, but you're, the lower part of your head is definitely wider than the top part of your head. Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm, I'm aware of it's that. Not to a You'll point. notice that when he headbutts you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That is <laughs> that it cuts, also true. Cuts yeah. like a knife. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, is yeah. serious. When uh, he caves in your melon with yeah, his oh, cherry tomato. I'm not headbutting this motherfucker. <laughs> uh, we're talking about Lowdown Brown MacGyver. What's going on, everyone? How you doing? <laughs> I miss you, beautiful fuckers. No shit. Yeah, it's been yeah, a couple man. weeks since you've been able to, to come on just scheduling. What, what was Kyle's nickname last week? Uh, uh, the other the, week the, when the, we had the, the the sexual macadamia nut. Yep, I think it's yep. what we called this. <laughs> <laughs> it oh. just made so much sense. <laughs> well, the thing That's is, like, awesome. He even was like, "Oh fuck!" Like he even realized how much sense that yep. made yep. as the coach. Sexual macadamia. Whoever coined that needs a like a. Di free dinner it or something. It was me. Yes. <laughs> wait, so you actually made a funny I joke? I made a funny joke. That could yeah, be a shirt. Sure. You made the funny? I made, I made the funny At this again. point, you are Splinter. 
Yep. You, you, you I'll know. take it. Yeah, I'll I'm take just it. saying. Ha, like, ha, ha. I made another funny. I made another funny. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm dirty. I eat garbage, and I'm surrounded by people more talented than me. Yeah, I'm Splinter. <laughs> you do scurry no, away sometimes. No, see, the last one's false, because if you are truly Splinter, he is still the most talented out of the fuckers. Okay, well, let's say I just I try my best to do less than everyone around There you me. go. Okay, cool. That's better. Cool, cool, cool. There you go, because yeah. let's face it. He could kick all those turtles' asses if he wanted to. Oh, I saw him with Shredder. Yeah. He had one nunchaku. Yeah, and uh, that I think shit that's, up, dude. That, that's the proper pronunciation, nonchaku. For the single? For one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. instead of the set, yeah, yeah. And uh, Shredder's like, oh, I'm going to kick this rodent's ass. And he's like, trash. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Literally in the trash. In the trash. It's awesome. Yeah. Nice. And the man who is the splinter of the GUI network, we got Mike Tom Bacon. Oh, 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 oh. But GUIpodcast.com for stuff better than this whole conversation uh close to 250 episodes of uh gui you can you can listen to all those uh, available at guipodcast.com along with uh all the other shows in that network including beautiful disasters uh from the mouths of madness um we've got besides geek fathers i think everybody is represented here tonight <laughs> on the different shows in yeah. the network yeah so yeah we're good to go oh wow yeah yeah uh, we're true. just missing it the, the, the well geek no fathers. hunter has guested a lot on geek fathers has so guested as well that's yeah. true yeah. Yeah. A little bit, a little tonight, bit, a little, little bit. We were talking. And he has spilled his seed into fertile women. <laughs> yeah, that is true. <laughs> yes, that's actually what he screams when he comes. Is I if my seed my has been spread. Fertile yes. woman. Oh, you're fertile. Never mind. I, I'm going to get like Pornhub level. The lamentations of the I, woman. That's yeah. right. Lamentations <laughs> of the woman. <laughs> I terrible. Guys, we yeah, don't even. I do we start with moonlighting? Well, do I was we, gonna ask all right, now, we, are we, we just gonna talk about Return of Bruno with... or are we going? Are we just gonna talk about his acting? I don't know I, if we're gonna bring up his musical career. I think what's we'll a little we, bit of acting. Can we do the in musical there? career first? Can we do that first? <laughs> this is so short. Can we do God that damn first? it. <laughs> it was the Return of Bruno, which everyone was like, uh, was he here to begin with? I guess, yeah, he was. So, well, he, that was the thing I was talking about. It was an HBO special that came out, respect yourself after. Hudson Hawk, and it was like a mockumentary, and it had like all the hot, like celebrities of the time, talking about how much they loved his ass. And I'm like, what the? Fuck was so this? was it an actual thing, or was it because he did that com- that wine cooler commercial where he was singing, and someone said, "Holy shit, he should do a whole album of somebody else's songs and pretend like they're his." All right, somebody was like, "What if we got somebody that was like Bruce Springsteen, but not good?" Like we didn't have to pay them. Yeah. Like <laughs> somebody, somebody who's that was basic famous recognized. for something other than music, <laughs> and then we so just Br- made them. Return of Bruno came out after Die Hard. Uh, uh, Return of Bruno, no, it came out before Die Hard. Okay. Return of Bruno was eighty-seven, and then Bruno. I mean, Die Hard's eighty-eight, right? Yeah, it was eighty-eight. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's after Blind Date. So the Return of Bruno. <laughs> Was really the catapult that launched him into Die Hard. I think it was. Di- I want to say it was the Blind Date. Blind Date probably would. Do blind it. Date was. You know what? For Blind Date, it, and there's nothing special. It's it's just a fun blind romantic comedy. Fine. It's fine. It's but it's fine. It's it's a perfectly fine movie. When that was really the transition from him into film. Yeah. From uh, Moonlighting, and apparently they hated each other on set, but they also fucked each other too. I guess I don't know. But there was a whole lot. Oh, was happening. there a hate fucking? There was hate happening? fucking apparently okay. happening on Moonlighting. But That's like some of the best fucking though. Blind date. Honestly, like, was, like I mean, what Kim, was that Kim Basinger? Shepherd. I think Blind Date. Hmm? Was it Kim Basinger? Yep. Okay. And yep. John Larroquette. Yep. I remember John Larroquette. Yep. So yeah. he was able to actually act against like known good actors, and they're like, "Cool, what do we do that with this moonlighting guy now?" And that's when Die Hard was being shopped around. Well, and they... when literally everybody else said, "No, thank you, I don't want to do Die Hard," and including. Frank Sinatra, who they had to because of the the book that Die Hard's based out of, out of. He did the original movie that's not anything close to no. what the Die Hard is that we know. And he just aged out yeah. at that point. Um, and I've got to give it to him. And we we can argue. We're going to go into the conversation about the typecasting that happened to Willis after that. Even though he did manage to branch out and do other things, uh, but like Bruce Willis being in Die Hard set it it did so much for the action movie stigma Definitely. with like up to that point in 88 we're looking at nothing but schwarzeneggers and your stallones and your lundgrens and they're just these jacked steroided out motherfuckers Big, beefy right boys. And, yeah. we got this fucking dude who is going to see his estranged wife because you know she left for a career and he's just this new york cop who's just this blue collar motherfucker who's like that's my job hey whatever and he is just like 
all of what 160 soaking wet like yeah and that's know? the thing is like, that i think that's what worked with die hard is that the audience saw more of themselves in his in his mm-hmm, character mm-hmm. because yeah you see rambo who just takes a gun and kills like 30 people and yeah but with with his character in die hard like he's like what the fuck do I do? Like he yeah. literally he's figuring out as he goes. He yeah. literally like he's literally is like not trying to save everybody. Time. He's pulling yeah. fire alarms and trying to call people. He's because, the everyman. Yeah, and every that's man, why yep. it fucking works. Because I mean, we already saw some of that with Indiana Jones, but like that's still fantastical. It, it was it, adventure. It was woo, it, it was adventure. You know, yeah, yeah. This was the first time that it was a big action movie, and it was breaking what we just said that the fe- the fucking eighties uh, run of the big giant dudes and it was a regular dude that gets fucking hurt and when he steps on that glass and he's pulling the fucking glass out of his mm-hmm. foot like in that movie you're like you feel it in the fucking bathroom yeah he's like i've got to clean myself up this shit fucking and, sucks and he right? gets his <laughs> plus <laughs> point there yeah. plus there's another thing that happens in that that didn't really happen in these 80s action movies which is he fucks with the bad guys oh, now i've yeah. got a machine gun you know le- you be kind motherfucker that's the kind of shit you never had oh, no, it was ho 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 I have a machine gun too. But you didn't so really good. have that with Rambo and all the Schwarzenegger stuff. And so it's no surprise that all of the like trolls of the internet love Die Hard because their entire identity is just being like, yeah, <laughs> I got the gun now kind of energy of yeah. the like. But the only thing is John McClane actually. Well, well, up the, the difference gun. is that John McClane was also fucking rad. Yeah. So. Uh, but yeah, that that energy of just like let me antagonize you to the point that you're not doing your job well. Um, it became a used element in action films after that. That was very much like let me annoy you to death. And like the fist fights just seemed oh fucking yeah hardcore shit. Can, can, can we also talk about how uh, adding on to Hobbit and Hunter's thing about the dialogue and how he's fucking with them? Can we also talk about how the fact where he's fighting the remaining twin and he's like i want to fucking cut you i want to fucking put you in the pot i'm gonna eat you and as he's fucking beating the shit out of him he like <laughs> literally said i'm gonna fucking eat you i'm gonna put i'm gonna put you in a pie and eat like who the who the fuck says that as army like, hammer outline. army <laughs> hammer says that. <laughs> but as That's... you're as you're like as you're like your your like kill line who the fuck because it was it was so well done remember because then he hangs him yeah and it's just it was so good it was so good he just i mean he lucked out i think too because i mean that's good john materman who literally was predator then die hard mm-hmm. then hunt for october and i remember back in the day they would have the hbo commercials and you could only show like a two-minute clip but die hard was that perfect movie where he's on the roof the FBI's fucking choppers are coming up. He's trying to get her body off, ties the rope, jumps off as the explosion. And it's like, oh, wow, that's a two minute scene, but that defines that movie so well. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And that's like one of like all these crazy fucking scenes in that movie. Well, and also incorporating what was really big in the 80s at that time with the Stallones and these Schwarzeneggers and stuff, but you put it in a Joe Everyman character is the one liners. I mean, that's what made Die Hard as impossibly rewatchable as it is, is that there it's just so many one liners. Welcome to the party, pal. Yippee ki yay, motherfucker. Like, I mean, now oh, I, like, oh, yeah, yeah, come to the coast, have a few laughs. Have a few laughs. I mean, it's just, it, it's so, you can basically quote that entire movie. Does it sound like I'm ordering a pizza? Yeah, yeah. Oh I my say, God. I know it's like, sir, this that... line is for emergency. Like, this is like like ordering a pizza. pizza. <laughs> You're talking about quotability. You've got like a Terminator thing, like, I'll be back. Nobody's as badass as Stallone Schwarzenegger of the people you know in your life, in the, like they are in those movies. But Bruce Willis in Die Hard, <laughs> yes, you have your yes. like your irritatingly sarcastic friend that's going to make some fucking jokes. That's why those jokes are a- able to be quoted more. Is that they're they're m- way more approachable. He filled not only a niche because he couldn't compete with those roided out m- motherfuckers, but like he also made it his own and made an entire new genre of action. Yep. Because accidental he, hero, he, no, yeah, he, yeah, the the every man who has the fucking mouth on him, oh. the New York but also, attitude. But he also yeah. want to get the fuck out of there. He didn't want to save the day. He's like, if I had the option to get the fuck out through the front doors, get the fuck out of here. I go and yeah. I'll, I'll call the cops for y'all. But I'm getting the fuck out of yeah. here. I, I, I've, I've got to throw this out there. I hope this isn't what 
we want to do later on for uh, Drunken Scene, no. but he it basically is like, you motherfucker, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to fucking cook you, and I'm going to fucking eat you. Who says that? Nobody at that point had said that. While he's punching, punching the, the shit out, out of the yeah. dude, dude. I mean, come on, man. Then he hits him, and then he kills El Leong. Yeah, like, you through a door. can't get more badass but than that, we've dude. Got, we've got to move on from Yo, Dyer. Oh, last yeah. last no, thing I knew had to gush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had yeah, to yeah. gush. Is that the best way I can you can define Die Hard 2 is that he starts out with the white wife beater. And by the very end, he didn't change to a gray one. That is all the shit yep. and sweat and blood. And dust. Yeah. And dirt. That's what I'm saying. Nasty. But you forget, like, oh, he must have changed. No, that's the same well, white one. Yeah, He's just but, been through too much shit. But you know what he did a year later? Look who's talking. No, oh, man. Talk about trying to trying to not get pigeonholed. <laughs> but, what do you want to do after Die Hard? Talking baby. Any chance I can play a baby? A mousy yeah. baby. <laughs> no, no. They came to him with that shit, and he went, wait, I just had to read some shit. I don't actually have to show up, and I'm going to make a fuck ton of money? Mm -hmm. Sure. All right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Like, that's less work than uh, being on an animated movie. <laughs> like, yeah, fair, that fair. was just prepping him for his later career. Yeah. Oh. God. <laughs> I mean, he's he phoned it in for like forty movies, bro. Yeah, he did. I'm not even gonna. No, I don't, you're I, right. You're I right. say maybe the last one that I saw that I was actually surprisingly impressed with that he did was a movie that I had friends telling me, no, honestly, it's not that bad. Was uh, Once Upon a Time in Venice. Mm. Mm. Oh wait, it's, hold on. No, I got I got one past that, dude. You you told me you didn't. You weren't impressed by Looper. That was actually after the Looper is before. Four was minutes. it? Yeah, I it was 2012. Yeah. That's I why I said, you know, ten Looper, years ago. I, I, I didn't. So I, did, I didn't see. I, mean, I, didn't I think know. they're pretty close. I think. But Looper is his two. last good movie. Really, that blockbuster. was really good, yeah. dude. That movie's really good. It forced. I mean, come on. What's the young kids? The young version. JLG of man. Yeah, Joseph Gordon Levitt. JGL. But me. he had to do the Willis eyebrow. No, they, they put a fake nose on him too, dude. They made that. They did a lot of shit. Eyebrow wink that he had to practice so he looked just like fucking. Yeah, you're right though. And yeah. one, the, so it was for JGL. It was contacts. He, the, they had to actually adjust his brow, yeah. and then they had to do something to his nose and his chin to get him a little like a young. And he could never Willis. be excited. He's yeah, he could never be excited. Right, 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 that that yeah. was more the more than they did with the flashback kid from Unbreakable, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where all he did was do like the weird mouth, like whoa, oh, yeah. Like, and then well, he just did that. It's like oh well, obviously it's him. So, but, but before we get to Unbreakable, there was one huge thing he did. Uh, well, there we was got a couple. so much shit before Unbreakable. Well, well, no, hold on. He, I mean, he had a couple good and a couple bad. I, you can't tell me the Last Boy Scout was a good movie. It is oh. a fun movie. It's, it's a I'm fun sorry. movie, but it's, it's not a, a good Shane movie. Shane Black movie. It's a fun movie. It's not a good movie. That's fun. Like Hudson Hawk is fun. Like Hudson Hawk, okay. exactly. Like they're, it's just that fun movie. Stupid fun movies that we should probably cover. Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> and he I, also I, did Die Hard Two, which we can all say is just an abortion of the first one. Uh, honestly, I go yeah. back and forth on Die Dude, Hard Two, and I do do. I rewatch no, it. Die Hard like, Three, that's where it's at. Die, exactly, Groots, we're on the same page. Yeah. I rewatch Die Hard Two enough. It's Die Hard and Die Hard Three because Die Hard Two is just Die Hard but where they tried you, to make it more than it oh, was. Oh, you mean where it takes it place yeah. at Christmas again, but on, it's at, at the airport? airport and uh, dude, it's just. And then you got William Sadler fucking doing like naked fucking hold yo on. yoga. That's shit. what makes like, the difference to the me. Fuck out of here. That William Sadler is one of the most ridiculous <laughs> bad guys. Where your introduction to him is him standing naked doing in yoga a mirror, or some doing shit, some man. crazy, you know, mirror karate to himself. Fucking and that's stupid. your bad guy. And I went, stupid. okay, you're not taking this seriously then. All right, awesome. It's that's also terrible. the bad guy that killed. More of his guys than John did. Exactly. That, yep. No, but like, <laughs> that's the bad so guy. Yeah, exactly. And I'm sorry, but you have the dad from Good Times and then showing about out of nowhere. <laughs> there are so many good things about Die Hard 2 that it's not a, it, making a good movie, if you right? Look at it, if you look at it from the good, bad movie perspective, but see, Die Hard was just a good movie. Yeah. There was no like... It's a good right. bad movie. It's just a good movie. So when they came out with Die Hard Two, there's a lot. There was a lot to live up to. And when they made, and I agree, they made essentially a good bad movie. It it does it doesn't have the same flavor. Like you can't. Yeah, no, you no know, it's because it's, when they came out with Die Hard with a Vengeance, you're like, oh no, this is a good on. fucking movie. Yep. Take Samuel Jackson out of Die Hard with a Vengeance. Is it still a good movie? It's way more entertaining. 
Yeah, I would say it's still entertaining. It's entertaining, but I think if you insert, you if you insert somebody, a else, it's no, a buddy no. cop. If it's a in, buddy cop. If you movie. inserted another person and they still have to go drive through fucking Central Park, um, no, I think with Die Hard with a Vengeance, instead of like replacing Sam Jackson with literally anybody, you do the same thing that of that comic where it's the Garfield comics, but you take uh, take Garfield out, and it's just John. Uh, with the lines from Garfield without Garfield being yeah. there and it's disjointed and fucking weird <laughs> where you just have Bruce Willis with his imaginary friend yeah, Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel Jackson is key yeah. to and his I would success. Fucking I don't know. The way, the way that John McClane treated Samuel Jack Zeus, I would say it's more like Garfield and Odie. If you took Odie out of any <laughs> yeah, right? skin, because John was really mean to him. <laughs> but imagine just like a fight club version of Die Hard with a Vengeance where like Bruce Willis is wandering around with that sandwich board and like... And he's like, no, my friend's here to save me. And they're like, okay, dude, this dude is clearly cracked. Let's yeah, just yeah, let yeah. him but fucking there's go. Moments, there's moments in Daughter of the Vengeance with Samuel Jackson that you didn't have the other ones. Like, literally, where all Bruce was trying, Willis was trying to do is to stop, you know, stop the terrorists, stop the whole thing. And they had that piece of gold. And literally, run away. He's like, Samuel Jackson's like, oh, shit, my gold was in that car. He's like, yeah, well. And John McClane would never give a fuck about a a brick of gold no where Samuel Jackson's like no no I want to go back and get that I shit I want to get that gold that dude took he my also, gold dude, he, he like grew up in Harlem of course he <laughs> should have had a brick of gold John, that's what I'm saying <laughs> hey all I gotta say is that you know one three awesome two is still better than any of the fucking sequels that no came fuck after. you I will watch four all day over fucking oh, two are, I will watch four oh the PG-13 one live you free can, die hard no, I will no. watch that all day over fucking two okay fuck no yeah. I'm not I'm no, not I'll take two I am not I at all I will say Timothy, this. Oliphant, <laughs> Timothy Oliphant is a way better villain than fucking William Sadler fuck you with his goddamn naked yoga fuck we, off we do go not fuck yourself. Have, go we fuck do yourself. not have enough time to go into and the Kevin Smith is in that motherfucker too so Kevin Smith was also in a romantic comedy called catch and release it didn't make it good I enjoyed it. Okay. <laughs> Live Free or Die Hard is... We don't have enough time to go into the amazingness of that movie. Well, we can't talk about... Tractor Trailer versus oh. uh, Aircraft, uh, Fighter Jet. Yes, it's, it's um, awesome. It's cop amazing. Car versus Helicopter. They uh, took... They truck took, versus Elevator. They took the fuck you uh, from Die Hard with a Vengeance and said, oh, we're going to up it. That's yeah. basically what they did. Yes, it is, is PG-13, that- but it is... Amazing, ridiculous, and having Timothy Olyphant as the bad guy, Dude, so good. where literally his whole all his goons don't know if he's being sarcastic or not. He's like, "Sir, do you want me to take her?" It's like, "Or do I?" And you're like, "I don't know. I don't know. Do you, <laughs> you want me to?" And it's amazing. The entire movie, you think about it, nobody knows if he's being sarcastic or actually giving them instructions. Yes, I know it's, I, so, it's, great. it's so I want to look at the timeline here about when Fast and the Furious started uh, fucking oh, around with their it. formula. And like it's after that, yeah. I'm wondering if like somebody, it's, one of the producers, Fast Furious, is like, it, well, dude, it was like a year. Wait after. a it's second, it's really cl- It's I think uh, Live Free Die Hard is 2007. Uh, Fast and Furious Five, which is what we say is the yeah, that's the that's the best. Two thousand nine, yeah, yeah. Oh, but four, yeah. So, but if, saying- so if you really want to go back, Fast and Furious Four is really where they kind of. Went back in and we're mm. testing the waters. Test the waters. Testing the. But I'm just saying. Still kind of a serious. I'm saying that. they're testing the waters compared to three. They're testing the waters. So if you really want to, it's in that realm of like, all right, I know what I'm doing here because. But the problem is, the, with Die Hard movies and the Good Day to Die Hard, just fucking shit the bed. Yeah. Now that yeah. one, I will not support in any way. I was angry. And did you know that he was on vacation? No, I had no fucking because idea. If you didn't know, I had no fucking idea. He, was he on reminds you God damn it. fucking thirty times in that I'm movie. On vacation, ah, Get the fuck out of here with that All shit. Right. So at that point, we're we're in the uh, we're in the early nineties now. Oh, oh, and we, and we did forget one eighty thing before Die Hard Two, where that? there was Look Who's Talking to. Oh well, yeah, yeah, we yeah. mentioned that. We mentioned the first one. Oh yeah, we didn't mention the sequel. You can't forget. Oh well, oh, and look who's talking now. Although he didn't Wait, have a voice. That was in the, that was in the nineties. That was the animals, and it was the dogs. Right? Yeah. Well, no, like, it was Danny DeVito and yeah. fucking whatever. Else. Technically, all in the nineties. So no, the first one's in the eighties. So where I really started to pay attention outside of his diehard shit was when. He started taking weird roles like Death Becomes Her. Yes, yeah. amazing. And then he, yeah. and, then, and then he had that run in the nineties that a went fun through the movie, end of the nineties where he was doing Terry Gilliam, Quentin Tarantino. Like he, he did a Vonnegut movie. Like well, that's, we got to talk about some. Sure. That's and that's can what we, I was saying. Is he, about, he like, knows to pick his directors. That's the yeah. thing. Can we talk about how like, Death Becomes Her was like oddly like it is a fun movie. That's a Mecca, awesome. right? Super but it's fun. like, but no, but it, like it, it. I get what you're saying. It's a completely other like other spectrum for Bruce Willis. So when you see him in that, you're like, oh, yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure that like, that, that becomes, that's the Mechas, right? 
I think so, yeah. Yeah. So just for a second. And Meryl just Street. There. Meryl Street. He's worked with and, uh, Zemeckis, Tarantino, Terry Gilliam. I mean, like, he's covered most of the was it Terry best Gilliam? directors. That was 12 Monkeys. 12, 12 Monkeys, yeah. 12 yeah. Monkeys, yeah. 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 Lupasan, yeah. I'll throw that out there. Oh, yeah. stuff. 12 Lupusan. Monkeys is a goddamn masterpiece of a no. film. I, uh, I will fucking fight anybody who says that's not a good goddamn. That's not but a, 12 Monkeys? Yeah, dude. I know. It's, it's, that's a solid fucking film. It's the man. most kind of Americanized of Terry Gilliam's movies, like it has where it has the actual- American actors in it. Yeah, American yeah. actors and a plot that's- pretty stays Coherent? on track yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah you don't get some shit where you're like wait did i take acid or no it's pretty coherent but... yeah tried watching tideland but see how geez. you feel about shit. 12 monkeys was post dire with a vengeance but prior to that we did have um uh pulp fiction pulp fiction yes and that's Playing the a year, one where a year before we had pulp fiction he there's no reason for him to be in pulp fiction it was no. tarantino had done reservoir dogs look you know john travolta the motherfucker was in the third Look Who's Talking movie, and that means he was not setting no, any star no, power. No. So he needed that. Samuel Jackson started to build up. Bruce Willis is the legit person who didn't have to be in Pulp Fiction and wasn't there because he tr- he saw Tarantino, and he's like, this dude knows what the fuck he's doing. I want to be in his movie. And he yeah. actually has one of the smaller stories well, he in did, the film. He did the, one of the same things that Brad Pitt did when he started to try to break out of his, like, you know, pretty Schema, pretty, pretty you know, boy roles. Yeah. You know, and started getting dirty, and California and exactly. dude, yeah. fucking California. Could we do a Brad Pitt episode? Well, True Romance was a True Romance was an early role for him. Wasn't yeah, it? that, that he, was early. Yeah. Role. Yeah. Can, we, can we do part, Brad Pitt? Because I really want to talk about. Yeah, yeah. But he did Seven, <laughs> and he did Twelve Monkeys, and, mm-hmm. and yeah, yeah. But Bruce Willis was commanding the kind of salary and star power. He didn't need he. None of these movies he was he was going to be in it in the next five years could afford his ass. Yeah, 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 true. Okay. True. Terry Gilliam couldn't afford his ass. Quentin Tarantino couldn't afford his ass then, you know. But that's and, that's proof from the pudding that this is an actual actor. Like this isn't somebody that's like some action dude that like I, I would say falls back ass words into acting. Like I consider that as much as you know, great and all. Schwarzenegger just happened to become an actor. You know that he right. was he was like a bodybuilder and doing his own thing, and right. they just got him into acting, and that's what became his thing. Um, Bruce Willis wanted to work with these actor with these directors. He wanted to do projects with them and he got enough star power where he's like, oh I can do anything I want now. And he didn't want to get pinched hold in his career. Yeah. Because he could have gone into so many I mean he's been in so many generic ass action movies, but he's also been in Twelve Monkeys, Pulp Fiction, these movies that aren't anywhere close to your generic action movies. Yeah. And, and let's say like ninety five is when Vengeance came out, but like he so he had always returned, but he had done enough in between, and especially yeah. after with a Vengeance that he's like, No, I'm not just John McClane. I mean, we, he we, would do his one big until, like, salary movie until for later the year. on. Until later on, well, and he'd make his money, and but then he'd do like two or three smaller films. Yeah, I was saying until later on, where he basically just is John McClane for the last fifteen <laughs> years of his fucking career. Well, we briefly <laughs> brought it up, but Death Becomes Her that is in no way a Bruce Willis role. He has the mustache. And glasses. Oh yeah, he's very like scared of his own shadow. Completely out of character for him. But mm-hmm. he, I'm pretty sure, wanted to work with Zemeckis. And 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 in the comedy, right. yeah, I mean, yeah. but I'm just saying, yeah. like that, like that's not selling people. Oh man, Bruce oh, Willis movie fuck. where he cowers oh. in the corner and has glasses and a mustache. No, we completely forgot about four fucking rooms. Oh, oh yeah, holy right. yeah. shit! Well, that was uh, I think that actually came he was out. at he was at the very final scene, the Tarantino yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. skit, where you know he there's a there's a, there's a, there's, a, there's the poker oh, he's game. The agent or whatever. There's the poker right? game. Yeah. No, there's yeah, a poker the game. Chop the finger he, off. He chops his finger he's off. The yeah, movie yeah. Star. Um, yeah, he's the movie star. But uh, yeah. did that actually was that actually shot before Pulp Fiction or was that right after? That's that after. was after. That was after. That was after. Ninety five. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of that was Rodriguez. You know, that was Rodriguez getting people together. When I saw him in that film, I was just like, oh. It made sense. It felt right that he was in this movie. That yeah, yeah. if that makes sense at all. Yeah, no, no, that was fun, and that was the kind of stuff he was into. That, yeah, exactly. And I fucking totally respected him for that because he was breaking out. Exactly. There yeah. were also smaller roles in the '90s that he took on that he was a major presence in the movie, but he wasn't the main character in in a way like uh, working with Richard Gere on The Jackal. Oh, which oh was yeah, incredible. Yeah. Which was fucking filmed Jackal. Yeah, dude. in Regiment. Was that filmed yeah. in Richmond? Yep. Yeah. Fuck. No, yeah, my, my dad worked at yeah. the Circuit Court Appeals. That's an underappreciated film. For about two that weeks. Movie is I stupid agree. As shit. Oh, so, it's, it's, so... it's stupid as shit, but it's fun, man. Uh, it is, man. Come it's on. It's our the early best... Jack Black show movie, too. Oh, that yeah. That was what I was about yep. to say. Yep. Watching him get shot to I pieces put the Jack in the same, cannon. I put that in the same position as like silly spy, like intrigue movie that's like goofy, like The Saint. 
Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Here's the, the thing. Bruce Willis, fun. It's Bruce, dumb. Bruce Willis it's actually fun. is it's not fun. that bad in the Jackal. What makes the Jackal fucking terrible is Richard Gere's. Yes. Is it action. Irish? Because I couldn't tell you because oh, it goes right. back and forth. Like, I <laughs> want to make sure we're done. And it's like, God damn, can we not, no. Can we not? Let's not talk it's, about Richard Gear. We're talking about Bruce Wilson. Right. Not Bruce Gere. Willis actually <laughs> does a pretty good job of being that chameleon where like, he has like no lines. But that's the whole thing. Like, <laughs> and that helps him out because yeah. you get fucking Richard Gere who has all the lines in a bad Hi, accent. Hi, Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I just got to stop the terrorist. Oh. Yeah. He was fine in the movie. And, and, <laughs> and Sidney Poitier was totally wasted in that. Uh, the the uh, the actor playing the Russian chick in there was fucking awesome. Sidney Poitier should have retired after Sneakers. That's what it was meant to be. Fuck. It should have been Such that, and that's movie. it. I know that that's where he should have retired. He said, "Okay, I did Sneakers. There, he can't go any higher than this." So we, we we did jump forward to the Jackal, but we we did briefly talk about the Fifth Element, and there have been I don't know if I want to call them trolls. Yeah, yeah fuck it. There, the trolls online that have said that that is basically. Die Hard, but traveling through space. I'm like, I disagree, sir. I Fifth Element agree. is a whole other movie. It's a whole other character. He's calling it Die Hard. A whole other feel. No, like Die Hard through space, because his main goal after the first 20 minutes is to get, you know what I mean? Like as the story progresses, is yeah. to get to those stones, basically Stonehenge of, of a sort, whatever. You so, know, but- I mean, that movie took everybody by surprise because it was totally European produced, Luc Besson. And it's such an amazing visual movie and such an interesting movie, like uh, in in every way when it comes to like the sci-fi, the fun of it, the soundtrack. Yeah, everything I mean about everything it. about I mean, it is Bruce Willis literally dies, gorgeous. dies his hair blonde. And yeah, I'm, it was and, such a different thing than like a, than a U.S. sci-fi movie. Yeah, everybody in that film was love. completely different from what you would expect them to. In that film, I yeah. honestly, I mean, I seriously, mean, everybody. Debo, Chris, like, Debo is the goddamn president yeah, in this movie, but, all right? No, but Grinch, I mean, you're saying every the, the the director was like, no, you are not going to be the carbon copy of what yeah, people they, are going to before. expect of you in this film, and that is what we got. We got so, but I have read articles where people were talking about his basic. Oh, it's Dara, but he's through space because his goal, his main job in the film is to get her to. Yeah. Right, those people but are idiots. Then I, I agree. Yeah. I'm just saying that is a that is a conversation that has been had. And please, so, Roots, in your say? own in your own words, could you please shut them the fuck down? Because I w- I want to hear so, that. So what are they gonna say? Like he's uh, John McClane in Jean Paul Gaultier? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like what the fuck? <laughs> like it's, seriously, it's 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 bullshit. But it's worth the conversation because we just totally shit all over that because that movie is a whole thing. I fucking love that movie Dude, forever. like, no shit, man, right? It, That's it, one of those movies that when I watch it, my heart gets warm. I'm like, oh. The funny thing oh, is, is that so movie good. was given not so good. Re- like, it came out right at the beginning of, the, of that summer season of, uh, I think, 97? I want to say 97. Yeah. yeah. And, but it came out. Pre-Armageddon, which was the year It later. used to be <laughs> Memorial Day was, Memorial Day was the first real big release. Yeah. No. And it came out. A year after The Jackal. Oh, really? Yeah. But it came out early May, and nobody gave it a chance. And that was a very strong word of mouth movie where, like, nobody even referred to it as a Bruce Willis movie because half the people didn't even know he was in it. But then the trailer started picking up and word of mouth, and that's when it caught on. Because you have movies not that long after that, like, I think it's fucking Lost World, um, mm-hmm. that everybody was Which paying was attention to. Which was a shit to. fucking movie. Yeah. So, but I'm just saying, fuck like, that, that movie, movie kind of snuck in there, and now, fuck. You can't have a summer release without it being that early May, and I think some of it is movies like Fifth Element that you nobody think? gave a chance to. Yeah, I mean, okay, yeah. maybe you're in the you you're in Fifth the business, Element. So. The next year, you know, what came out early May, Matrix. No shit. Yep. Yeah. Fuck. Does anybody okay. remember that he did one of the several remakes of Yo Jimbo? With Last Man Standing, we completely yes. oh, forgot yeah. about that one. Yes, that Chris movie, Walken. That is so true. much stupid fun. <laughs> oh, it's so stupid. So he just blows it's motherfuckers really away with bad. 45s. Yeah, no it's so shit. basic, and yet oh. you're like, it, it, it's one of those you think he's got to be having a good time with this movie. But see, I think '98 might have been the peak year for Bruce Willis because I'm looking he did at Armageddon. Dude. Uh, well, like Fucking. as far as like his visibility as an actor, at least. Yeah, they've got the siege. Uh, the siege. The Fifth Element, Armageddon, and Mercury Rising, all in the same yeah. year. Yeah, Armageddon definitely. Oh, don't forget Apocalypse. Of the video game. Yeah, he yeah. voiced T. Yeah, if you look at the couple of years after that, that's when he kind of slowed down a little bit. Was oh, you mean like... his his character in Ally McBeal? Uh, that... <laughs> no, I no, I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> I'm no, talking about like... Ally McBeal. 
he 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 had a huge like freaking bukkake of success in '98, <laughs> and then he did like Breakfast of Champions, and he took a chance. And, and Sixth Sense in '99 as well. Took a I mean, Armageddon on, on, a, on a director. Armageddon was the biggest movie that year, so he was in the biggest movie of '98, and he was also in one of the biggest movies of '99. He didn't take that much of a fucking break because you got to film the fucking movie, and '99 is when Sixth Sense came out. Well, Sixth Sense was not shot for a lot of money, and it was a it was one of those runaway like huge success movies because that wasn't and I see, do enjoy that film that, like, that's I, where I, I think, I'm not a big fan of Shyamalama Ding Dong I do like Sixth Sense that's where I think we, that we was, that's you know. the dividing point I feel like for Bruce Willis's career is a, a heavy on action movies then you get to Sixth Sense yeah and fair and things past Sixth Sense are a lot more kind of the only house. thing the only thing yeah. that doesn't make sense for the the Shyamalama Ding Dong universe is that he was in Sixth Sense and then he was also in Unbreakable and, Breakable was awesome. But no, I love the movie. But moving forward, when you get to Glass and who that character is, it, mm. no, no. <laughs> when you get when you this is universe he created, it doesn't make sense that Bruce Willis played both characters. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, right. One's dead. One's a superhero. You can't. You can't be both. I mean, you can, but that's not how your universe was built. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. The way Bruce he was cast in Sixth Sense, you shouldn't have cast him for Unbreakable. Is all I'm saying. Even well, though I love that fucking movie. They, I mean, they don't interconnect. Like, Sixth Sense isn't a connective tissue with Unbreakable. I know it's not, but he was... He, it seems like Shyamalan has tried to, con- like, make, like, a, a, a like his own multiverse to his films. Uh, just with the superhero stuff. I mean, like, uh, Lady in the Water isn't, like, oh. the other superheroes that are come into Glass 2. Where it's, like, the... You don't know. The, like, the, the fucking pool nymph. And the dude with the did you see what he did? Arm. Did you watch what he did with Glass? Every I, I don't really respect him for. But I'll give. Now. But I'll give you this. But you at give the you end something. of Split when his character shows up, his character from One Brigham yeah, shows up. I was like, oh, everybody's like, oh fuck, fuck yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. This <laughs> makes this shit like yeah. hardcore. Now we now know Glass was a fucking disappointment. Oh. But at the very end of Split, we were all fucking hyped up okay, about that shit. What director doing a thing with people with superpowers is like? setting up that there's going to be a fucking showdown on the roof of like a building that is doing like a celebration with fireworks or some shit. I, I forget exactly what the plot is, but there was like talked about where they were going and it was going to be like a rooftop throwdown straight out of a fucking superhero movie. And you're like, fuck, this is going to be epic. This is going to be great. And then it takes place in the fucking parking lot next to a food truck. With like, puddles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't forget about the, the puddles. puddles. The puddles. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, the puddles. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to drown you in a puddle. Uh, Ang Lee's Hulk was awesome in comparison. Oh, my God. Come on, can, stop. Can, wait, can stop. both stop. movies just suck? No. Did I have to like one of them? No, Look, both, just, both Scotty's going to let suck. go of the fact that his face is on a pillow. you got to get let go of the fact that Ang Lee's Hulk does suck. It's just terrible. It's not, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. It is. Um, I mean. Thanks. Uh, that's all the wind being taken out of the room by Groot's terrible opinions. It's a perfect time for us to take a break. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Because so, I was, I was going to go, go into some fun shit, and then he had to bring up Ang Lee's I, I don't Hulk. Need, we should, yeah, let's fuck. take a breather, and then we'll get back oh, to the fun yeah. stuff. We'll erase that Ang Lee sh- Hulk Does my breather involve giving him, like, a sock party? Because Low down. Ang Lee's Hulk the is The second terrible. half, there will be no talk of Hulk dogs, shitty movie uh, scenes, Thank fight you. scenes in the dark. A Thank dad you. made out of electricity. Yeah. 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 None you. of that. Yeah. No Nick God Nolte. damn it. Zero Nick Nolte, all right? Fuck that. It was at least as good as Gremlins too. <laughs> God. What the okay? What the <laughs> fuck is that do? All Holy right. shit! Yeah. Uh, sorry about these terrible oh. opinions. We'll be back <laughs> in just a minute. Uh, listen to some of the other shows that you can listen to on the network. We'll be back in just a second. <laughs> Coming straight from the mouths of madness. I'm Lowdown. I'm Fu Hunter. Do you love horror? We fucking do. So this is a podcast dedicated to all things in cinematic horror. We're talking movies, television, composers, special effects artists. We're going to fucking cover it. So if you love horror, embrace the madness. My name is Amy Bogard. And I'm Mike the Hobbit. And we are the hosts of Deeply Upsetting, where we use our expertise to answer your most upsetting hypothetical quandaries, such as what non-wigged animal deserves wings? And what body part deserves a secret mouth? Which cryptid is the worst roommate? These questions and more that plague you will be answered on Deeply Upsetting, available anywhere you get your podcasts and at GUIPodcast.com. In a world of blockbuster movies, there's another dimension. The dimension of schlock cinema. Join us at Beautiful Disasters on a journey into the fringe territory of B-movie abandon. We review the flicks that are forgotten or underappreciated 
to give them a proper place in the annals of celluloid history. I'm the Groots. F you, Hunter. Your guides at Beautiful Disasters. Come along with us for a fun ride. May, May the, the flock be with you. In a world with too many reboots and remakes, two men will stop at nothing to make it even worse. Join Mike the Hobbit and Tondi as they play by their own rules while pitching new takes on some of your favorite and least favorite films and TV shows. What podcast would dare to bring this upon the world? This is Smack My Pitch Up. Hey guys, Scotty P here with Smash on your left. And we are the Geek Fathers. That's right, bringing all the trials and tribulations of being a geeky parent. So welcome to our world. And as always, join us or cry. Welcome back to the second half of Geeks Under the Influence. All things Bruce Willis. And before we get to the part where Lowdown just belts the theme song for Armageddon. I was so ready. You were you you were ready to fucking were roll. Ready. You were ready to go. I was ready to go, bro. Uh, we are first going to be talking about our sponsors a little bit. First off, of course, Amazon.com. If you want to go through the entire Rolodex of Bruce Willis films, uh, what isn't available through Amazon Prime is at least going to be available on for purchase on Blu-ray or DVD on Amazon. So Don't lose a thing. So, don't yeah. miss a Jesus, thing. Yeah. You Christ. don't want to miss a thing <laughs> oh, God. at all. Oh, God. Oh. Uh. Um, <laughs> if if the one thing that your collection is missing is Hudson Hawk. Oh, then, yeah, uh, that movie. That's, that's a Go treat. ahead and go to Amazon.com through our link at GUIPodcast.com. Go through that link. Anything you purchase, we get credit for. So we get some money from the purchases that yep. you're already going to be making through Amazon. So it helps us out. You don't have to do anything extra. You don't have to pay any extra. You're helping us out literally by just taking a second to go through our link instead of just normally going to Amazon. Everything Don't miss that, a thing. Everything Don't that miss we, a thing. Everything that we have mentioned and everything we are about to mention in the second <laughs> half is available on Amazon.com, so make sure you fucking That's go right. there and purchase that shit. And if you are a collector, the Criterion Collection did release Armageddon. Oh, Yes. I have the Criterion 12 Monkeys. I do not have the Criterion. <laughs> no, there's, we'll, we'll get that into it. We'll get in there in a second. We'll so, oh that my next God. Year. Um, Ooh. Come to Amazon. We'll get together. We'll have a few laughs, and you, then you can purchase what you need, and we get credit. So, but wait, I can't order a fucking pizza. <laughs> I tried no, to order a pizza. You cannot lady. order a pizza on Amazon. Not yet. Well, not yet. Yeah, not hey, yet. They're, they're, they're testing the drones in Seattle. I think. Well, there's yeah, that right. there's that store you walk into and just buy everything, and you know, walk out. You know. Oh, we're fucking terrible. All we're right. sorry. The way that we really enjoy uh, you supporting the show. Is of course T Public. Boom, T Public. We've got a shit ton of designs, including a couple new designs that should be dropping right before this episode drops, including a new GY Knights uh, design that looks like an old school retro yeah. uh, saloon design. Uh, um, uh, that's gonna be dropping. I saw like a sleazy '80s bar or, or '80s bar design. Hold yeah, on. I mean, which I, is I actually more fitting. Yeah, that looks more like a like hey, like. GUI Knights laundry mat. Or or, or right I would there. say the uh the nice eighties it looks recently like, it single looks like the triple R or not the triple R, the, the bang bang. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say it looks Twin Peaks. It looks it looks like the, the Roadhouse. I'm j you know, I'm single, uh there's vacancy. I wanna get my dick wet sign. That's what it looks <laughs> fair, like. Fair, fair, fair. And it, it's fitting because GI Knights, like you know. Nice. Not there yet. Not yet. No, no, no. But yeah, no, we have we have a new yet. GR Knights design that's coming out. There's a new deeply upsetting design, the uh, Haunted Beach Doll Company design that uh, should be available as well, as well as a number of other designs uh, that are coming out. I've I've got like the design bug, so there's going to be a bunch of stuff dropping here oh, uh, man. shortly. And uh, yeah, that's all available. Duipodcast.com slash store. Click on the link and it'll send you right over to T Public, or just uh, click on the store link on the homepage that'll send you there as well. Uh, there's deals all the time. So if you don't see a deal, uh, wait like three days and check again, and very likely there will be a deal. So um, yeah, over 40 designs, getting closer to 50. <laughs> and then we're like, hey, listeners, you want to design some? Let's just add some shit in there. That's the new that thing we're new. doing. Yeah. That is the, the LIPS program, the listener illustration program that we're doing, where if you think you have an idea for a design for us, uh, send it in. Send in the design. It could be a play on some of our logos, an inside joke from one of the episodes, something relating to the Geeks Under the Influence network. Uh, not necessarily just this show, but all the other shows in the network. Um, maybe let us know what it's in reference to. If it's a super... We've done a lot of these shows. 
If it's a reference to an episode from 30 episodes ago, please remind us. We're old. Our brains don't work that well, <laughs> as you probably know. But let us know what the reference is to. Uh, send in your designs. If we like it well enough, we'll throw it up on the uh, on the T Public page, and we'll send you merch with the design on it as a thank you, um, and also yeah, as we'll, a um, as a payment for letting us use the design. We'll, uh, on we'll put on we'll put on our fridge. There will be there, there will be contact with getting pro appropriate shirt sizes and stuff. And yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, You'll get yeah. sent like stickers, shirt. Yeah, we'll and, we'll make sure yeah. you get stuff that's like appropriate for you, like the yeah, right I, mean, I just want to make stuff. sure people realize like we're not going to send me a triple XL because I'm a medium. I'm sending fucking... everyone baby onesies. Is that the voice that's of the, like... our future artists? <laughs> You don't well, know. Man, God damn man, it. Man, I don't want any fucking throw a triple X. Uh, you know so yeah, uh, uh, just send the either a link to the design or the design to uh, geeksundertheinfluence at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, are we looking forward yeah. to the designs? And even if it doesn't get picked for T Public, I will definitely throw it up on social media. Yeah. No, it's going to be posted across, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. across the board because the old, we have so you. many shows and so much on the network yeah. that we'll, yeah, we want to share yeah. that shit. And the fact you took time to make it, that's a big deal really, i want to throw everything up there but like i said before is that like you guys are just as much of dicks as we are so you're gonna have like just like stick figures fucking each other or something and be like yeah we're not doing that. uh gui fucking each other's dicks and no, like no. that's great for our social media but maybe not for a t-shirt that's what i'm saying like it'll, everything is at least going to be broadcast across social media but we're not we're not doing that for yeah. a shirt so on to uh the the real meat of uh this episode uh, the thing that drives us more than anything else, uh, we're talking about uh, the the liquid courage that it takes to talk about the man, the myth, the legend, Bruce Willis. We're talking about what we're drinking. Hey, we're fucking drinking. Hey, 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 we're getting hey. drunk. You want to know? Well, here you go. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the party version? That's the party version. Yeah. Come yeah. on, bro. Come that, on, bro. The fact that the music doesn't go up an octave like his voice does when he's like, you want to know? Well, here and you like, go. Doo -doo 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 There's no change. It's just do -do 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 -do. like, okay, fuck. Okay, I guess that's where we're at. I like, just like, I, the, no <laughs> I like the, ga the, the gang Kyle vocals of, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. no, hey. no. I just no. see like multiple Jesus clones Christ. of Kyle wearing sunglasses going, hey. Hey. <laughs> yes. Oh, we do it like the mirror reflection. Like we just yeah. need to get an image of Kyle like standing in there. I'm thinking of uh, like... what's that motherfucker's name? Uh, Robert Palmer. That video where yeah, all the chicks yeah. are black, but it's just Kyle, and it's just Kyle clones with. Glasses. I think that's called the nightmare. Honestly, yes. Is that is that addiction to love? That was yeah, yeah. That yeah. is the addiction of love video. Yeah. For all, right, all you so youngsters, <laughs> we've clearly been imbibing on the break, uh, and yeah. we're going to talk about a little bit of what we are drinking. Uh, Lowdown, you were nice enough to bring some beverage here. I. I was. This is an East Coast local. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I'll see. Yep, yeah. This is from a brewery called Trapezium. This uh, is their... This is the second episode in a row we've had a Trapezium, which I'm stoked about. <laughs> this is a burner phone. This is... A, it's it's basically a Berliner Weiss. So it's a kettle soured wheat beer, which a, a soured wheat beer is a Berliner Weiss. Uh, condition on Montmorency cherries... Yeah, my morency. Fragrances and yeah. flavors of, hib of, of hibiscus, lemon zest, sourdough, and cherry pie. Um, it, it It's really good. It's a good spring beer. 5.5%, very sessionable, good fucking spring beer. Like, I, it's not a straight sour. For those that don't, don't know the difference, like, you have sour, you have Berliner Weisses, and then you have, um, oh, what's the other one I'm thinking of? There's another one that's even stankier. Oh, uh, Gozes. Gozes. Yeah. This is like the lighter end of that spectrum, and so it's that little bit. Of, it's got a little bit of sweetness on the back end after you get through the sour. It's almost like a sour patch kid, where you know you sometimes they're sour, sometimes they're sweet. Exactly. Um, so it's very good, very good, delicious, delicious beer. I would say, yeah, I do really enjoy this. This is something that um, I would say is sessionable, but sessionable, but also at the same time, you're not going to be chugging this necessarily. Fuck no, goddamn. No. Which means that a, a, like a four pack of this is going to last you a little bit. But it's going to be an enjoyable time. Uh, this, I would say, is perfect training wheels for people that want to get more into sours. Yes. To kind of build yourself up a little bit. Because I will speak personally, when I first tried to sour, I dove in the deep end. <laughs> I first tried to sour. Um, I dove in the deep end. Punched you right in the face. And huh? yeah, I got, I almost drowned. Yeah. Uh, it was bad. Did you it get mouth fucked? I got mouth fucked really hard. <laughs> so uh, if you are looking to understand that 
flavor profile a little bit better, then starting here is probably a good place to start. And then build up your understanding of like that this is, you know, a different approach to a beer style. And uh, it's delicious. And uh, I also, uh, it's not a share, but I always had to bring it up. Whenever I see it, the first time of the season, whatever that year is, I always buy it. No matter if I was looking for something completely different in a flavor flavor profile, I will always buy Hell or High Watermelon by 21st Amendment. That Fuck is yeah. my fucking intro to non-cold weather beer. Like, that's, I, I don't care. Like, I was not looking for a watermelon wheat beer, and I saw it, and I'm like, oh, I'm okay, I guess I'm buying that's, this. That's there was something, for a while. There was something in the air. I oh, yeah, years, been, yeah. Just because of the time of year, I'm like, Mexican beer. So I got Pacifico and uh, uh, Modelo Especial ready to roll. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. fucking Pacifico is fucking delicious. Pacifico is great. Right? It's, it's delicious. It's super underappreciated. Everybody talks about, like, Dos Equis or Tecate or, of course, Corona. Corona, yeah. And, yeah. and uh, no, Negro Pacifico Mon- Negro, uh, is or Modelo Especial. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, Pacifico is, is right up there with the rest of them, too, as far as no, I'm concerned. I fucking... The first time I had Pacifico was like probably like 2011 or 2012. I got off work from I got off work early, bouncing on a shift, and I wanted a beer, and that was actually the special that month. And ever since then, I fucking it's a good fucking. Beer. Oh yeah, it's oh, a yeah. great beer. Nice. Yep. Now, Groots, you got something uh, a little bit different for us to try. Yeah. You got some some liqueur. Yeah, a little bit of a bourbon here. We're Virginia. Bourbon. Fuck yeah. Bowman Brothers. This is the uh, their entry level uh, craft bourbon, uh, the small batch. It's out. a blend, right? No, it's a it's a straight it's a straight bourbon whiskey. Is it? Oh yeah, yeah. And it's made uh, super East Coast local up in Fredericksburg. Yeah, delicious. We, we mm. are the most East Coast East Coast local motherfuckers right here. Goddamn right. Goddamn right. Goddamn. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, Bowman <laughs> Brothers. If you ever get the chance to go up to that distillery, uh, it all. is a hell of a a trip. Uh, Groots and I. Uh, with Crump back in the day, went and yeah. checked it all out, and that's a that's a fun tour. We met the distiller, rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace. Back yeah, in the day, he was a cool fucking dude. He he had that moment, and I love that when this happens when you go on tour and they realize that you're like chill and you're not like uppity, and they're like, oh okay, I can just talk to you like a normal fucking person. Cool. Yeah. So this fucking thing over here, and yeah. then it's just this asshole. Yeah, he was just being himself <laughs> the whole time, and it was a fucking blast. Yeah, we had a great time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and then, I love that about. Not just like the fact we're GUI, but like just that we're that we're those people. We're like, yep, we love the thing, but we're also when we go to experience the thing, we're not like, half so I heard me, hey, or just off. don't give us the corporate tour, just give us the laid back, yeah, tour. give us yeah. the laid back shit. We don't show us the weird shit. Nonsense. Where's the weird shit at? Yeah. We want to see the weird shit. Yep, we tried some of the weird shit. We <laughs> did, yeah, we did. <laughs> this is a very smooth. Yes, it is. Lower, it is. lower. And... I mean, technically speaking, it's a it's a Virginia bourbon, but like. If people want, if people want to look like the snobs we just talked about, want to look at price point, it's ranked as a lower end. But no, fuck that. It's a tasty fucking bourbon. Yeah, I'll buy this over Larceny or or Bullet any day of the week because it just, I think it has a better flavor profile and the sweetness on the end too. It's yeah, fucking delicious. And it's yeah. it's affordable and and there's if you like it, there's many layers above. I mean, you can get up oh, to yeah. the seventy eighty dollar range. Yeah, you well, can that's with Bowman Brothers, no problem. And they're yep. they're fantastic. With the Bruce Willis episode, there's so many different flavors that his movies come in that there's a lot of different. Opportunities not lately. Like, well, not lately, <laughs> which we'll get to. Oh. But yeah, there's a lot of options as far as what you're going to drink. But make sure it's tasty. It's something enjoyable. Something that you can in session relatively well. So like a good approachable bourbon, a nice light Mexican beer. Bring appropriate uh, beer or uh, burner phone with the burner phone man. Yeah, that's, the Solid logo alone though. suggests that that's a that's a good uh, no. I was, I was like action I, movie. I was thinking choice. burner phone, even though it was you know, radio for Die Hard, but then a later movie that we haven't gotten to yet in the 2000s called 16 Blocks, where he's only communicating to the terrorist through a cell phone. Sure. You remember that? Have, have you guys seen oh, that? Well, 16 Blocks, and yeah. I'm sure you weren't too worried about holding on to this beer as a share for our definitely going to be coming in the future coverage of the, I think, 2004 film Cellular. Is that the Chris, Chris Evans uh, cellular movie? <laughs> Are you talking about Evans? Yes. Okay. Future movie. Captain America? Yes. Oh, yes. oh, oh, I thought you were talking about the Stephen King adaptation of The Cell. Oh, no, Cell. No, yeah. I tried to watch that, and I've read the book. Yeah. Wasn't that the sequel to Phone Booth? Yeah, I think it was, <laughs> actually. Wait, wasn't that a wasn't that a Kiefer Sutherland slash... Uh, Cellular uh, was the Die Hard 2 of phone movies. Yes. Wait, <laughs> yes. it wasn't wasn't the phone booth one? It was... Uh, Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell and yeah. Kiefer Sutherland, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where the whole movie, he's in a fucking... Oh, my God. 
directed by Joel Schumacher. And those, are both, Schumacher those film? are both sequels yeah. to a lesser known movie from back in the day called Dial M for Murder. Oh, so, there you yeah. go. That's actually oh, a good going back that's to Hitchcock. Actually a really good movie. Going back to Hitchcock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah, because, I mean, let's face it. Who has not just tried to. Dial M for Murder? I've not tried to dial M for Murder personally. I'm gonna, I mean, I'm there gonna, is I'm a remake it. of Dial M for Murder called Perfect Murder that starts. Shut up. You, that it, do, we need, do we need to do that on Madness? Do we need to... Uh, do these, no, do no, we, no, no, no. I don't want to do it that. It was remade, a Japanese remake called One Miss Call, right? That's the same thing? It's there was the, also close one, enough, yeah. Well, no, there the there was thing. an American yeah. version of One Miss Call, too. It was called Two Miss Calls. Because no, America's got to do it bigger. It was yeah. called One Miss Call, and I think it had Halle Berry in it. Yeah. I thought that was cellular. All right. All right. We're, 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 we're the, we're uh, the American remake with Halle Berry called One Miss Call was about her not getting the call to be in Swordfish and her career got better. Um, All right. So, so, okay. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Well, let's talk about Cop Out. Oh, we, we, uh, no, we got, we're, miss, we're missing a lot of movies between that. I actually that. had a segue because uh, that Billy Bob Thornton we just brought up, Bruce Willis did try his hand at comedy with a movie called Bandits. No, oh, no, him. no, Bandits no. is fun. Oh, I will defend God. Bandits. I'm Bandits not defending it. I'm just oh, segueing oh, from Billy Bob Thornton and serious well, movies to that. He did the whole nine yards, right? He was See, I like the whole nine yards. Whole ten I like yards that. is whole nine yards, as good, yards. but it's yeah. still not bad for a sequel, for just a silly sequel. Yeah. yeah. I, what, I don't think it holds the, up, but I enjoyed the, it at the time. You know what doesn't hold up? Matthew Perry's cocaine addiction. Um, it's pretty prevalent in all those Could movies I around the time. Be more well, he definitely held it up. I mean, he was keeping it. What good. about The Kid? Remember that film? The no. Kid. The, you mean Disney's The, the kid. kid? You have yeah, to say kid. Disney's, Disney's the, kid. the Kid. Yeah. Oh, no. That's yeah. why I didn't see it. That was a. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody did. <laughs> Uh, is it no. weird that I thought you were talking about Mercury Rising because that's the only movie I know of him with a kid? Oh, oh like, wait, there's man. a few movies before that. We got, we got fucking Hearts War. We don't have to hit all this shit. We got, Dude, we this got, is the point no, where it's all turning, bro. No, no, Tears for the Sun was a good fucking that movie. That was his passion that project was, I was thinking of. Yeah, that's, that's a, a good fucking poop. movie, dude. That was okay. No, no, fuck you. That was uh, a good goddamn movie. That was sappy I, as shit. Uh, I will agree with Groots on that because the director's feature prior to that was motherfucking Trainee Day. And so you watch mm. Trainee Day and then you go to Tears of the Sun, which is fucking boring. There might be some good scenes in that, but that movie is well, it just, slow. It, it was like as Blood shit. Diamond in the sense that it was like it was so preachy and it got like really over. I love Blood Diamond. You're talking about Leonardo DiCaprio? That's and a Jennifer pretty Connelly? good movie, but I, like, I enjoyed the shit out of that film. I, I mean, it had Jennifer Connolly in it, so I kind of love it by default. But that's your blindness. But whatever. Yeah. She, she, she lost. She like had I an have ass. Seen for, that light. She, had, she has had an ass for a second, and then she lost her ass. So anything post true. like 2000 when she lost her ass, I, I'm, I don't give a fuck. I anyway, know. my opinion. He went six cents, Unbreakable, then a bunch of this shit, and then a movie. Oh, here we go. Then he went a little experimental. Here we go. I, Robert with Rodriguez, fucking Sin City. Yes. Where he had a bum ticker. Bum ticker. He did have a bum ticker. But dude, a bum ticker. The, his his portrayal in that going against Nick Stahl's like Yellow Man was so fucking so good. good, man. But I'm saying that's all soundstage work. And, and the narration. Again, that's the narration, him taking a risk. What, the narration is what. Did if it. you look at that cast, he's the biggest like person in that. That. Uh, no, uh, Clive Owen was. I mean, when I he, saw the film, the, he's the most iconic of Thank those you. actors. Yeah. There, there are a lot of actors that have been big at that point. Well, big at that point, but they were like newly big. Like Rosario Dawson and Clive Owen, they were definitely big and maybe even bigger as far as like in the zeitgeist at that time. But Bruce Willis had them by literally decades on his career. Yeah. Like, like, he's, he's, like he's top, yeah, like, like, he's top of the billboard <laughs> in, that, in that movie. Yeah, and yeah. Fair, everybody. fair. And it was a, uh, what's his douche nozzle that can never get a good haircut in the 90s. Um... Josh Harnett. Yes, him. His haircut in the '90s was so fucking uh, bad, <laughs> it, dude. His Josh Harnett's haircut in the '90s was so bad. It was like, dude, what do you? You have a cowlick permanently on the side of your head. Do you remember when people called him Josh Hottie Net? Do you remember God, that time? I think what, he, why? Was, was that different than it was twenty years? Ago? Look, it was, what's worse is Benefer Part Two or Josh Hottie Net? Like, I mean, I've oh. enjoyed his acting for the most part, to be honest. Oh, where he just looks like an exhausted bartender. He like, was that's great in Black Hawk Down. And if you haven't seen Bunraku. That movie's fucking awesome. Well, faculty. I kind of, re- I kind of remember that. That's been a long time. Oh, go. he did the Penny Dreadful stuff. Yeah. Oh no, Penny Dreadful. He, he Penny yeah, Dreadful. he was good in Penny. Yeah, he was good in Penny. He was good in Penny. He Dreadful. did drop off the face. Like he got got away from acting for a little while. He took a break. But you know, he's only in like three minutes of uh, Sin City. By the way, yeah. He, well, no, the beginning and the ending. <laughs> yeah. That's it. But 
Uh, before oh, yeah. the same year that the city came out, he also Bruce Willis also did Hostage. I I saw this movie before, and it had Kevin Spacey and Samuel Jackson. And it was way better. So. Oh, fair enough. Fair but enough. Fair also, enough. Fair enough. Also, now, now, I will say, <laughs> the fact that I remember striking distance with fucking Sarah Jessica Parker. Is that the more, boat one? Yeah. Oh. Where he's, got a, where he's a he's cop got, with a bum he, knee. He's a cop with a bum knee and a, so and a speedboat. A boat. Yeah. God. He, he's I a forgot par- about that movie. He's a fucking harbor cop. It's the he's dumbest a- shit ever. It was like the freaking body of evidence of his movies at that time. Oh, God. I will say, Hasha's got a better... Rating than Ocean's Twelve, so well that's not hard. Ocean's, I mean, Ocean's Twelve was better than Ocean's Thirteen. I mean, Jesus. Ocean's, they, they they just had fun with those movies. I, I don't have any problems with those movies. Should we bring up Red? It is based Red on a was comic. Fun. Yeah. That's down the road. We still have like Lucky Number Eleven. That that was I mean, good fun. That was back that, at Harnet. Also, God damn yeah, it! Yeah, no, but that was a fun movie. <laughs> that was a fun movie. Morgan Freeman, Harnet. There and who I feel like I'm missing like two actors that were in that film. Oh, now I will say another one that was a surprise for me that was good, at least I enjoyed because apparently I only and I'm the only one that enjoyed Hostage was 16 Blocks. That I enjoyed that film. Right. I love that yeah, stuff, and yeah. I think he's an <laughs> incredible deaf. actor, but he is so fucking annoying in that movie. It's it's his voice. He's like, oh no, they're shooting at me. Just this like that's his voice amazing... in every role. Yeah, no, that's, have that's you him. seen something the fucking Lord made? Because if you want, if you want to no, see he's, most he's deaf, that is roles. top tier acting. Right. Something Lord made with Alan fucking Rickman. Now what they should have done for sixteen blocks is get Chris Tucker to do the there voice we go from oh, yeah. the Fifth Element ah! and just be like, ah! oh no, they shooting at me. Come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. And, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, my I want to see, gonna I wanna see the the uh, fifth element sequel called Sixteen Elements, and it's just Chris Rock <laughs> and Bruce Willis. Chris Rock and Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker, it's yeah, whatever. Matter. Planet yeah. Terror, man. Like, we already talked about Sin City, but Planet Terror was his next big like fucking. I'm in this shit, guy. Yeah. Like, I mean, we're like really, a few years past Cop Out because that was what 2002. No, uh, no that was like 2010. That yeah. was 2008 that was after, or 10 or something. Yeah, yeah, Top Out is after. after Live For Your Die Hard. That's okay. how he met Kevin Smith. So maybe, oh, all right, so that <laughs> that is the shift. 2010, yeah. That is the shift where he, you can tell he stopped giving a fuck. Uh, because of the movie, so I'm going to go back and talk about Planet Terror, which is a really fun film that Robert Rodriguez directed. <laughs> about zombies and yeah that was a good he's one. like the general that doesn't that doesn't listen to anybody i mean he's he is, pretty much a cameo in that he's yeah very he's a not, cameo. yeah i, mean, I know he, i know he, i know he doesn't have it like, cop out death. fucking sucks now cop out is a fun stupid movie but no, you could not. tell no, he it's totally not, there's, was phoning it the fuck in. well look there's at the movies that he did the that same movie. year and and talking about phoning it in as much as i do like one of these movies uh cop out the expendables and red all came out in 2010 all the um, expendables. Hey, Red is mo- way more fun than fucking Cop that's, Out. That's dude. the one I enjoy. But even yeah. in Red, he, it, that's not a good movie because Bruce Willis is acting. Bruce Willis is clearly phoning it in that movie. Um, it's everybody else that's doing a lot of the fucking work. Uh, that that's an ensemble piece that's really fun. Bruce Willis is there. Well, yeah. that's because he's there with what Helen Mirren and and Morgan Freeman, Morgan Freeman. And yeah, fucking John no, dude, Malkovich no, no, is no, also Malkovich. in the stop, movie. Stop, stop, Remember stop. that, please. Stop. Stop. He, you know what else he was doing at that time? He like, had the man his yeah. homage. You know what else he was doing at the time? <laughs> Fucking like Transformers 4. Fuck off. Who's that? John Malkovich. We do not speak of the Transformers, <laughs> please. <laughs> it's called a paycheck. <laughs> 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 and Bruce Willis knows how to make one of them. But <laughs> as bad- Jason Statham was in a Huey Bowl movie along with a uh, fucking. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're all collected paychecks. Uh-oh. I will say, though, as bad as 2010 Uh-oh. is with the red and the shitty movies like that, 2012, motherfucker is in a Wes Anderson movie and Looper. So he's in True. Moonrise Kingdom. And dude, fucking, New Rise Kingdom was so fucking fun, saying, dude. That kind of is like, I know I took these other movies as paychecks. Let me try. I mean, both of them. A Wes Anderson movie. And Expendables 2. So it's a Stallone movie, uh, yeah. right? Yeah, no, yeah, he, he made a big yeah. paycheck. Dude, yeah. he made it. I remember how big the Expendables was for people. Like no one of our particular. They're uh, fun flicks. One of our GUI yeah. hosts um, of Geek Fathers. I'm talking about a Kyle Smash. I remember his, his uh, description of. The, walking out of seeing the Expendables, way back 
when, because he and I were, you know, friends back then, uh, he said, I just wanted to walk out of theater and punch somebody. It was so good. <laughs> Um, so this is a Kyle <laughs> statement. Today, this is by a way. Kyle statement. You mean the man that initially defended Batman v Superman? No, hold on, hold on. The, he uh, initially defended Superman Returns. Oh, correct. Yeah, and then that's, Man of Steel. I've done that's, that before too. Hey, fuck you, Man of Steel's good. I will fucking defend that film. <laughs> we don't have yeah. time. Hey, hey, get your like 2012. Get your Jesus shit out of the way. It's was a good his film. last hurrah? Who's that? Bruce Willis. Yeah, I'm looking. Oh, okay, fair. I'm looking at the list of stuff that he was. Looper, in that, Fire with a Good Day to Die Hard was 2013. Yeah, that that about sums it up. Yeah, 2012. I will say Looper yep. was fucking awesome. Look, once a, once upon a time in Venice, I will still stand by is that it's not a high budget picture. It's not anything great, but it's like it's decent. It's a decent film. But he hasn't had like any kind of like an acclaimed interesting movie where he was actually had a chance to act or do something interesting since 2012. I'm looking at it, and you are 100 percent correct because there I was give potential. A f- the only thing I've watched since then was Death Wish, and that was a fucking tire well, fire. I would say there was film. potential with the reprising his role with Split, and then going into no, it was glass. shit. It was shit. But that's the that last. Was shit. Yeah, no, it was no, no, terrible. Right. There was potential. There was potential. But there then was the M Night happened. But yeah. So I will Shot say that fucked it up. Uh, a good uh, good day to die hard was a the worst of the Die Hard films, yes. but. There was slated that there was going to be six, and then he I guess he was waiting on the green light to do six, um, and that never happened. So, like, I feel like before, like, it sucks that we never got the complete John. I feel like we we, we have an incomplete John McClane We had a Die series. Hard battery commercial. I absolutely disagree, because I have the first three, and I have a complete John McClane <laughs> experience. Well, that's your opinion versus yeah. reality, so I give a fuck about that. I'm saying, like, an actual, what they're doing, <laughs> John McClane movies, they've I, had two I since then. I accept his reality as my own, honestly. Well, that's so, fine, um, and you can jump in the black hole with him and be sucked away forever and not be fine. I'm just I, saying, like... What I'm looking like, at, I'm <laughs> looking at his uh, his list of films, and one thing that's interesting oh, is yeah, that, oh, like... They're terrible. Almost like Gangbusters, it's, like, anywhere between, like, two and four movies a year for the majority of his uh, career, where... He's he's a working actor, but he's also yeah. there's a line that he's not overloading himself. There's some years more than others, but like it's usually around three or four films a year that he's doing. Uh, yeah, look and at then, this. And then I mean, look at this. And then shit, 2021 man. hits, and he does seven films in 2021, and then he does uh, six films in 2022. Oh yeah, no, he's been doing films and films and films. And that's dude, during a pandemic. Dude, he's still cranking out that many films dude, during the, a pandemic. The, the, the films he's doing, the highest rating is like four. Yeah. Yes, like they're, they're dog shit, garbage. So I, I I frequent a lot of different YouTube channels that 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 check out different bad movies, and he did this movie with um, oh that guy with the really fucking blue eyes. It's a sci fi flick, uh, maybe a year or two ago, and it's so hilariously bad, and it's so hilarious. Are you talking fun. about Cosmic Sin? Yeah, I believe so. Okay, uh, I looked at that and went Bruce Willis sci fi movie in space. Cool, I'm down. And then didn't get a chance to before Dude's I saw got the 2. reviews 5 on it. Rating. The reviews 5. on it, I was like, the, the reviews were like, this is maybe the worst sci-fi film I've ever seen. And I went, okay, I can't. Oh, that wasn't even it. Uh, no, is no. that the one on Netflix? No, no, the one I'm talking about is called Apex. Apex. Oh, oh Apex. no. Yeah. That is 2.9. That's 2021. Oh, no. That came out the year late. No, that came out the same year. Never mind. Yeah. Same year, and it has a better rating than Cosmic Sin. Yeah, no, it's... By point .4. <laughs> it, it it it's kind of unfortunate because, like, I know he's he's now retired. This is the last of what he's gonna have released yeah. come out. Because he could have had that potential of having like a Nick Cage. Because like we talk Nick Cage up yeah. now, we forget about the Left Behind and the fucking shit that was. Oh, you wreck- mean the, the unknown or whatever it was called? Where yeah, you know, just, like I mean, the known, unknown. Nick Cage the for a period of ten years had some shit. Oh, and some real shit. Then he's kind of resurrected, it, and it, it kind of sucks because of Bruce Willis's condition. This is this is it. This is it. Yeah. But I also that's part of it too. Is like if, if there's people out there that, being like he, he he the condition that he's dealing with isn't really that bad. He just wants an excuse to stop acting. Uh, they can go fuck themselves. This is a dude that can just say, I'm done acting and doesn't need to have an excuse He's of having a enough. degenerative fucking condition that, uh, as what an excuse. What is the, and this is because I haven't looked it up, what is the, like, if it's degenerative, I mean, what is the long-term with that? 
Well, part of it is him. Alopecia? Alopecia? I don't know. It's like communication. He has has had a very big ego for a long time. That has been some of the problems that he's had. A lot of the reasons he has worked with certain directors and then not worked with them again is because he's been been traditionally very hard to work with. Mm. I I did hear about that with the cop-out thing with Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith, that broke his fucking heart. And we heard all about that in his his, spoken word shit. It is also Kevin Smith who is going to, I mean... He's like, a sensitive he's, dude. Well, he's going to he's going to put everything out there as opposed to somebody like Luke Passan or John Materian who might not communicate as much as Kevin Smith's going to. Yeah, the uh condition is aphasia. Uh and it's a aphasia. A, a brain condition yeah. responsible for uh, uh reducing your ability for expression and comprehension. So, uh basically he has trouble like with comprehension uh moving forward which yeah. is why from what i understand he was being fed a lot of his lines in later roles before he quit oh, acting so you thinking he had it before he actually announced no that, that's a lot of the conversation is that actually the reason why there was a, a speed up in the number of films that he was in is because people were basically like trying to get out as many roles as possible and there's mixed conversation on whether that was to just make sure he had a nice nest egg to like be comfortable before not being able to even do that mm-hmm. um and some it was a conversation about people taking advantage of him in his uh in his uh minimal uh comprehension state hey, he's he's bruce willis he doesn't have to do anymore he's done no he's he, done he's that's done. what i'm saying good. He, he look he had a ton of stuff that's come out the last two years that has not been well received but i don't think that has any factor in, in this decision if you can't do what an actor is supposed to do, which is comprehend lines, be able to communicate the lines, things emotes. like that. You're yeah. supposed to be able to emote. You, 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 you know? have to walk away. And look, there are plenty of actors that we can say we can see where they were taken advantage of. I mean, fuck, one of that movie we covered on Beautiful Disasters, Vincent Price is in, that shitty, shitty fucking dead zombie movie thing. We could also say that, you know, he's done a shitload of movies. Look back, and I'm kind of curious on some of these directors of these movies, because one of the things that he took a big risk on and it paid off in his career as he took a risk on Tarantino. Oh, yep. He took a risk on Luke Passan and some of these directors that had not established it. So you could also almost look at maybe he did so many movies because he wants to give these directors a chance. I mean, again, he knows, Tarantino was not known going into Pulp Fiction, okay? And like, he also knows that because he had done that in the past, later on in his career, he he he's thinking maybe okay maybe I can do the same thing with these other young directors is like my name associated with their film yeah will so. because honestly like if you look if you remember way back when in the nineties when Paul Fisher came out what were the names you saw on the marquee for the fucking film I'll throw you in one more like we we brought up M Night the only reason people went to go see Six Sense in any way is because Bruce Willis starred in that movie. And if he had not looked at that script and said, okay, first time director, I'll go ahead and star in your movie. Mm-hmm. For the good and the bad, yeah. you wouldn't know who M. Night is. True. And I can say, look, if you look at that flurry of movies, who knows if he's just like, you know what? I like this these directors earlier stuff. I'm I gonna believe be in them. them. I'm going to give the, them a shot because yeah, I, yeah. I believe in and the project. And it just didn't. Knocking them out. It just, it just you know, no, lightning the, didn't and, strike twice. So yeah. it just didn't work that way. But I get what you're saying. Is like most of these films, he might have been like, all right. And maybe he knew he was on his way out too. And he was like, hey, my name still holds weight in Hollywood. Let me do these films. Yeah. You know, that's that's what he's done throughout his career. Yeah, that's true. That's a very good well, fucking point. That's a very also, good point. There's a lot of really good actors that have done a lot of where they're, they're, they're just working actors also like Willem Dafoe or Anthony Hopkins, you know, he just has a new movie coming out recently. Actually. Anthony yeah, Hopkins. I mean, there, there's so many, I, John Malkovich, we, we talked about him before a great, great example I, of I, someone I, who has done great things, but also has done a lot of other things. Yes. He's in Space great. Force. That's, he's in that now. <laughs> well, I, I think the difference that between those kinds of actors and Bruce Willis is that, you know, a lot of those actors, though they have appeared, like like uh, Malkovich was in Red, right? Well, yes. Yeah. And Red 2. And Red 2. Um, so they've had made those appearances in the films where they always play the most art house film character in those films a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, well, except for Malkovich was in, in Transformers Red. and he was getting tickled no. by a Transformer. And in Red, he's he's ca- pretty cartoonish. Well, and Hopkins Red. also was using, said YOLO in a Transformers movie. I mean, there is a point for yeah, everybody. Yeah, and my brain wants to explode. Yeah. 
when you mention that, because that's terrible. The thing with Bruce Willis that makes him like apart from that a little bit, and part of the reason why we're having this conversation on this episode is that uh, Bruce Willis came from uh, kind of a a cultural shift away from the big big eighties beefcakey action hero. One hundred percent. And he yes. he became the archetype for the like late eighties into early nineties uh, kind of uh, hero by accident. Uh, you're not going to get the uh, Keanu Reeves in Speed without Bruce Willis. You're not going to no get... Shit. Yeah, you're, no shit. You're, you're, no shit. I never thought about that, but you're... you're yeah. die, hard, die Hard on a Bus, yeah. Yeah, Die Hard on a Bus, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, it actually led for uh, Steven Seagal, who was not a beefcake to bust heads Hold and on. fuck... No, to have an action passenger, hero that doesn't know how to kick. Passenger is, uh, 57, no, Wesley but Snipes, in, <laughs> Die Hard on a Plane. Die Come on. Plane. But, in, yep. but in reality, if you look at Skull's like... <laughs> Alfred Justice, Mark for Death. He is not a big beefcake. Hold on. Skull's films didn't happen until post. Under really, Siege. Really, until post Die Hard. Die Hard on a Battleship. Yeah. Which was 1991. Two. Die, Die Hard, Hard on, on a, a train. train. Yeah. But you see what I'm saying, though? Like, you're, you're right. Like, the only other guy who wasn't a beefcake to be a badass after Die Hard was Steven Seagal. Yeah. yeah. And he was so much of an asshole that his career never went as far so, as Bruce Willis. He, he did Under Siege too, and it was Train, and like it was that was dude, it. So, yeah. whatever. So yeah, was Willis's sucking. performance was so uh, transformative that he was maybe not the reason for it, but it was definitely part of the conversation with the change in the the cultural shift of what an action hero is. And then from that celebrity, he didn't archetype himself to a point of always being the action star. Although throughout his entire career, there's been action roles. Yeah. Uh, he has peppered that with a lot of very weird, outside the box films. And well, he started able... with comedy too, with the with the sitcom. Yeah, with the moonlighting. Moonlighting. Yeah. And, no, no, and, I really dig whole nine yards. Oh, yeah, and, I, and, I think and yeah. he's got comedic elements in all of his yep. most of his movies. So somebody that came onto the scene during the eighties action, uh, fucking like renaissance, and transformed it, and then also was involved in Kurt Vonnegut movies and fucking uh t- you know, Terry Gilliam movies yeah. and everything else. Um that's what's a little bit different than the than some of these other actors where they have always been the weirdos and not the action stars also at the same time. Is that okay. Bruce Willis kind of existed in both spaces yeah, for I the majority just, of his career. I was just comparing him to being a working actor because he he did the big big popcorn like blockbuster movies. He yeah. did willingly did a lot of these awesome indie flicks yeah and did a lot of great roles that way you know and then when you know culture shifted a little bit and he wasn't as relevant anymore he was doing a lot of other stuff and you know i mean for example is 98 he did yeah. fifth element and then armageddon you can't get any more experimental yeah, than no a Luke Besson movie like kind of the way uh, with, Fr- with how that's retro goes. future yeah. movie and then and, literally yeah. the most america movie ever we Jesus. fucking get up on that goddamn thing we're gonna use drillers we're gonna save we're the gonna, country we're gonna blow it up we're gonna save america and the rest of the world i guess but mainly america yeah like that kind of shit like it's the most generic basic action well movie. i gotta give him credit for not only having like good comedic chops but having good sense of humor too even if he was a little bit of a prima donna sometimes on some sets because his fucking roast was, was awesome. awesome yeah and i i will say just real quick bringing up arm again if you do get a chance to check out the Criterion Edition, it is worth it as a very coked out Ben Affleck does the commentary track and just shits on his own movie for the entire <laughs> run of the movie, making fun of and a, like just Michael Bay and shit like that. So it is one of the Criterion Editions that's worth checking out to get the audio track by that. I haven't done that yet. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. I don't miss and thing. Obviously, we could be talking waxing products about Sweetest Bruce Willis Dream for several do. hours, but we are at the very <laughs> end of our episode. So what I, I have for you, us babe. is that this is just one scene, four parts. And so I don't want to miss a we're thing. We're all going to be in one scene together. And this is uh, from Hudson Hawk, the really the, the precipice of well, the- Well, uh, no, it's not. Not at of all. Of the Bruce it's Willis like, Mountain. It's, it's, it's not. No, but okay. Who's going to be Hudson? Anybody uh, dying to be Hudson Hawk? I mean, I'll I'll be out to talk. All right, there you go. Okay, I'll, cool. I'll be uh, I'll C- Caesar Mario. Caesar Mario. I'll be uh, Mario. Tommy Five Tone. All right. I guess it makes me Antonio Mario. Hudson Hawk of the classic Bruce Willis film. Making a drunken scene. It didn't matter, Caesar Mario. I didn't know the circus was in a town. 
Yo, Hawk, why you, why won't you do the auction house, bro? Like, I don't know, man. There's a thing. I call me superstitious Caesar, but I don't like commenting on a crime within the 24 hours of committing a crime. Within the 24 hours of getting out of the joint. Ah, what are you, fucking crazy? Come on, I guess the one night's work. You take the thingy and you put it in this thingy. It's kind of like what you were doing in prison with the anus. Direction, as even your brother can understand. Yeah, directions even I can understand. <laughs> Slaps Anthony on the shoulder. Shut up. Look, uh, if you want to go straight, open up a hardware store and sell spatulas. Be my guest. And you flip your fucking eggs. You know, if uh, the Marios weren't uh, the third largest crime family in the New York, I'd say a kiss in my ass. But considering your status, I'm g- gonna say a slurp of my butt. <laughs> Walks over with a bottle of wine. <laughs> oh. Have you ladies sampled our fine house wine? I think you'll enjoy it. <laughs> Beat it, Tommy. Ha. No dinosaurs allowed. Smashes the bottle over Anthony's head. Here! Holds back his men from going after Tommy and Hawk. Stop. Uh, Let's go. He's got some weird slurp butt shit going on. Yeah, the slurp butt. The slurp (laughs) (laughs) butt. There was a cinematic classic. That was so bad. Living, I believe that happened. I so so much butt slurping. Yes, Uh, who slurped my butt? Who the fuck says that? No, literally just Bruce Willis. Yeah, literally just Bruce Willis. So that is a a perfect way to end this episode all about Bruce Willis. Uh, Thank you so much for listening. Definitely check us out, Geeks Under the Influence, GUIPodcast dot com, as well as all the other shows on our network. I am a meat popsicle. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Yes, um, make yes, sure to yes. rate, review, subscribe this show and the other shows on the network. Share on your social media. Tell the world all the beautiful things that is Geeks Under the Influence Network. And we'll find you next time for another episode. I'm Mike the Hobbit. Lowdown Brown. Join us or die. Slurp my butt, Hobbit. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> burn, 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 burn. Join us or die. Join us or die. Or I will swallow your soul. GUIPodcast.com Oh no, they shoot at me! Come in, come in, come in! Come in! Come in! Oh my god, what's gonna happen here?